insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the Insurance Guys podcast, hosted by yours truly, Scott Howell, and the incomparable Bradley Flowers. For agents, by agents, we're here to share real-life experiences, tips, and insights related to all aspects of both being an insurance agent and running a successful agency. So sit back, turn up the volume, and let's get down to business. Insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the Insurance Guys podcast. I am your fearless host, Mr. Scott Howell, agency owner and insurance evangelist for I Protect Insurance and Financial Services based out of Huntsville, Alabama. And our mission on this podcast is to help you guys as agency owners and insurance producers and CSRs any way that we can to help you with your sales, with your business, with your marketing, with all the new technology and the digital space. We want to help you as much as we can. And before we get started, please help me welcome a six foot three sophomore from Sarah Land, Alabama, first team All American, rivals five star recruit. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a fantastic insurance agent and a better person. I give you the incomparable Bradley Flowers. How are you, Bradley? I'm great, Scott. How are you doing today? Man, I am doing fantastic. I am fired up about being in Mobile, Alabama today for this podcast. Guys, I drove five out, four hours down here. I stayed here last night. We are excited about the guests that we're going to have today on these podcasts. Um, dirty little secret. Bradley and I used to try to do this uh, off-site where I was, you know, we were doing it, what do you call that? Uh, like savages? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, kind of a satellite where I would get on the phone and he was here and we just found that the energy, just the whole feel of the podcast doesn't, which wasn't quite what we wanted. So what I've done, and this, this goes to what I'm about to speak to, Bradley, because we got a little bit of housekeeping before we get started here. I take time out of my week uh, about once a month to come down here and do this. We batch file about five of these at one time, and then we slow drip them out each week, and we are doing this for free. And the way you can pay us is to subscribe. He just stole my thunder, I'm folks. sorry. I'm so no, sorry. No, 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 no. That's fine. Guys, listen. If you are getting value from this podcast, there's two things you can do for me. And I'm asking for zero in return. Zero in return. Number one, subscribe to the podcast. Number two, if you're getting value from this podcast, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, if every single episode that you listen to, you get at least one little tiny nugget of information that you go, you know what, I need to use that. Share the podcast with your agency friends or your, you know, your family or whoever may be in the insurance business. Help us gain followers. We will not stop doing this podcast. I have already told Bradley, until episode 100 hits, we're not stopping. We're going to keep going. So, so share our podcast with all your friends, all your insurance friends. Third thing. Third thing. Leave a review. Oh, and, and please leave a review. One Good. star or five star. There's no, <laughs> no either one or five. I don't, anything in between sucks. That's right. One we, or five. We, we want you to tell us how bad we suck or how wonderful it is. Guys, we, we would love for you to leave a review. We'd love for you to tell your friends about it. But I tell you this, whether you do all that or not, we love you and we really do appreciate you listening to the podcast. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Let's, let's go ahead and jump in it today, guys. I want to introduce a very special guest star, and before I introduce him, he needs to know that I've been watching some of his videos for about the past hour, some of which are absolutely hilarious. But guys, today we have a special guest. His name is Mr. Ben Volk, and I am from Alabama, okay? I grew up in a small town in Alabama, and I barely scratched the ninth grade. So I'm about to say where he's from, and most of the people in the state of Idaho are going to cringe like they have never cringed before. But he is from Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. See, yeah. I knew how to say that because Cor- it, isn't there a big golf course there that's this very popular? Yep. Yeah, that, yeah. So I knew that name. F- from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, he's got some great information that we want to learn about today and we want to share with you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Ben Volk. How you doing, Ben? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Scott and Brad. Um, I appreciate you guys having me on. I, I, let, uh, let me say again on air how much I appreciate you being here. I really do. Oh, no, absolutely. Any any time that I can kind of tell my story and, you know, maybe relate to some to other agents that are 
are trapped in the normal marketing box that they get put into when we, you know, start this profession. Um, I really appreciate it. And, uh, I always jump at the shot to, uh, kind of speak on what, you know, really added a lot of kind of purpose, I guess, right. to my practice and, right. uh, a lot more success, you at, know? So at, yeah, I appreciate it. Before we get started, I want to go back and reverse engineer guys. The reason Ben is on this, this podcast there are some videos that he have, he has created, and if you haven't seen them before this podcast is over, I'm going to get him to share where you can go to see them. But basically, it's kind of a satire of insurance agents, mm-hmm. and it's absolutely hilarious, yeah. absolutely yeah. hilarious. But before we get to that, because that's that's going to be the meat and potatoes of this, let's go back and talk about how long you've been in the industry, what got you in the industry. Talk a little bit about where you went from point A to where we are today. It's, a, uh, it's definitely a, a kind of an interesting story, and I, I don't know how you know well people are going to relate to it. So I was in sales a long time, all through college. I got a degree from Washington State University, uh, Go Cougars, in advertising. Okay. And so I was doing uh, cell phone sales that whole time through that. And I, I got the degree in advertising, got the advertising job, didn't like it, went back into cell phone sales, kind of had one of those quarter life crises. Mm-hmm. And uh, I quit my job with no plan B, was unemployed for about two months, just doing kind of like video production on the side, thinking I could make a living doing that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Long story short, I ran out of money mm. and uh, I had to find a profession that, you know, could give me a, an income that I could live on. Mm-hmm. And I went to a career fair and ran into who is now my current employer, got on the phone with my mom and asked her if, it would, if she thought it'd be a good idea if I did insurance. And she told me, yes, that, that I always had a really good personality of it or for it. And I, uh, I didn't look back. You know, I got my, uh, my, I got my series test done. I got my, uh, my PNC and my life and health and, you know, started as a captive agent. We're going, I'm going on five years now. Yeah, just hit the ground running. And, and so I'm so glad I did because it was, it was so hard because I think when you're in college, a lot of people my age are probably going to relate. You expect this, you know, perfect job handed to you on a silver platter right after you get out. Mm -hmm. And you're you're thinking that your degree is kind of the the cost of admission when it really doesn't work like that. You know, your degree is more like a a tool that you can use to get in where you want to go. But, you know, no one's going to give you a job just because you went and got a degree. You know, it was, I was really happy that I found a place where, you know, I felt like I, I could actually retire at and build a, build my own business and, and build it my way. So, yeah. So do you consider so, yourself a marketer who sells insurance or an insurance person who markets? God, that's a really good question. You know, I, you know, and I'm just going to be truthful. I, I, I truly think that I have a gift for marketing. That's what I'm really super duper passionate about. You know, it's kind of a win-win. If I can be really successful at marketing and and if that makes me really successful at insurance, Mm -hmm. then, you know, I would do it that way. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, what makes me really happy and what makes, fulfills me when I do insurance is when I can talk to people face to face, um, when I can drop into a business and, and cultivate a relationship off of a total cold call. And when I can just kind of make something out of nothing happen, you know, it, it doesn't really, you know, running Facebook ads and, and trying to, you know, generate targeted online leads, you know, that really doesn't make me, it doesn't really fulfill me. Um, and, and I don't think it really creates that long lasting of a, of a relationship. It doesn't really give me the right person that I want in my book of business. You know, I want discussion partners and I want friends and, and family and, you know, I want real life people that, you know, I can reach out and talk to in my book. And so if I was looking at that from a marketing standpoint, and I was trying to build, you know, a marketing book, basically, that was full of just insurance business. I don't know if that would that would really fulfill me or bring me much happiness. But I can totally agree with that. What is your main focus? You know, if I said, OK, you know, financial services, life insurance, home and auto business, Where's your focus at? What do you, what do you on a day to day basis? What do you find yourself gravitating towards? What vehicle? You know, I'm a producer, so I really enjoy PNC. My centers of influences are are you know mortgage lenders and and car lot guys and uh, real estate agents. So that's that's where I really 
try to try to maintain my focus. Financial sector right now, to tell you the honest truth, I'm just too nervous about it. And I don't, you know, I'm the type of person I don't really like a lot of, I, I mean, I already have enough hoops to jump through if I want to be able to market myself for insurance products. So with the financial services and stuff like that, you know, I, I kind of backed off of it this year just mm-hmm. because of the, the DOL ruling and all mm-hmm. that. So really, I, I'm a PNC guy. Um, and then the, the life insurance kind of comes with that as mm-hmm. long as I can, you know, explain that effectively and, and get that point across. But I would say that I, I'm, a, I'm a PNC guy for sure. And, you know, the reason I asked the, the marketing question is, is I think one thing that I discovered, I, I don't have a marketing background. Mm-hmm. I, I sort of discovered marketing after I got into insurance. Now, I loved insurance separately, but I sort of fell in love with marketing and advertising. And I think if 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 someone that has marketing and advertising skills, whether they're learned or natural or or whatever it may be, in an industry that is so far behind every other industry in terms of marketing and advertising, if you can figure out a way as an agent to align that with your insurance business, there's a huge land grab because nobody else is doing it, just like these videos. Yeah. Am, I, am I right? I'm, I'm going to comment on a couple things. So basically, as an advertising major, you learn how much money insurance companies spend on advertising. And it's really genius, you know, because in our online world, you see insurance kind of sold in a, in a serious matter, which, you know, is sometimes effective. It kind of depends on, on the advertiser. Sometimes it's not, but really when you see the most successful insurance campaigns, like I'm going to use the Geico Gecko, for example, here, it has nothing to do with insurance. You know, it really, the whole right. idea of it is it, it has their insurance is not mentioned, you know, once other than at the very end when they say that we can save you 15% or more on car insurance. But when a logical person actually sits down and thinks about what they just said, that includes every number in, the, you know, that is that exists so that's really not even saying anything but it works and it, and it's just brilliant advertising so in that sense i think that insurance companies are actually have the most advanced marketing because they're so psychologically in tune with what can get people to actually follow through and and make a change in you know their insurance or actually you know spark maybe a feeling of fear or maybe if just whatever whatever emotion that kind of drives people to buy, man, insurance ad agencies, they got that locked down. They, they really know what they're doing. I mean, if you look at just the ad spend on like a, like a Super Bowl um, and how much money goes into insurance commercials, it's just insane. And they're genius and brilliant. The, you talk, and you're talking about organizations that have the no, United you, States you know, government so, is going to go yeah. down before the insurance industry does. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. hundred percent. You know, yeah, I, I, I used a, to, a, I, I used to have the figures uh, and, and, I, and I think these have probably changed a little bit in the last three years, but the figures that I had yeah. uh, studied and, and looked at were Geico and progressive both spent right at a billion dollars a year. That's a B not an M. Yeah. Uh, yep. the, again, yep. this was about, yep. this was about two or three years ago, but their marketing advertising budget was a billion dollars a year right behind them was all state at about seven well yeah. all state was at seven hundred and fifty thousand and then state farm was right behind them at about six hundred excuse me seven hundred and fifty million for all state and then all uh state farm was right behind them at i believe at six hundred million and, and then and then everybody else was kind of at the three four five hundred million dollar Ge- mark Geico's and we're up to wondering two. why we're getting rate increases i know right yeah why no. is my insurance going up bro? right it's because of that, that and, you know russell wilson endorsement we got bradley uh just mentioned and i did not know this i i haven't done research on that in a couple of years but he just said that he thought uh, geico was now up to two billion dollars a year i believe it from a marketing standpoint mm-hmm. there's none better i mean they just i can't even cancel a geico policy if i try anymore because they have a whole department their retention team which you know you can really kind of bundle that into marketing because really all they have is a salesperson calling up a client, you know, selling them on the fact that they don't need to cancel their Geico policy and that Geico is going to beat the rate that I just gave them. So in that sense, I think that they are really advanced. Now, on the other end of that, so where you guys, I think, are kind of talking about where we're really far behind is just the ability for insurance agents themselves to market themselves in an advanced way at a local level that the big dogs and the big companies are okay with and that, you know, isn't going to tarnish their image 
and um, is going to operate independently from their own marketing department. That's and exactly that sense, what I'm talking I, about. Yeah, and in that sense, I totally agree with you that we we are behind. But I am seeing. I know that you know within my own company, and I I, I don't think I can say that you know for legal purposes, but that's okay. But and I have a feeling that it's op- that it's kind of going this way across the board. Is you know kind of a little bit more focus goes back into the the brick and mortar operations. But, um, you know, companies are taking steps to motivate agents to participate on social media, you know, by creating the content for them and, you know, co-oping Facebook ads and different things like that. So I do think that that's going in a, in a better direction. So we'll, we'll just have to see where that goes, though. Let me add to kind of what you're saying right now. So first of all, I'd like to say this for the for the agents that are out there listening to this. I think that the playing field has never been leveled in the way that it is being leveled right now for us. And let me explain what I mean by that. I realize that ain't nobody listening to this podcast got $2 billion to spend on marketing. But on the flip side of that, let me tell you what we as agents have that companies like State Farm and Nationwide and Allstate and some of these other captive carriers don't have is we have the ability to be so nimble and so flexible on our social media. And guess what, guys? It's the four-letter the four letter F word. It's free for the most part. I mean, you, you can boost, mm-hmm. post, and run Facebook ads and do other things, and some of that's very valuable. I, I won't discredit that. But we have this, this ability to be so nimble, uh, you know, create a video right now, which Bradley will probably do here in the next 30 seconds, and throw that sucker up online, and it, there is no 17 layers of middle management for – you to have to run a $2.5 million commercial through to have to get it approved. And it's done today, but it won't run till September of this year. And so I think that really helps from a local level. If you can, if you can start understanding things like Facebook and Pinterest and, you know, some of these other uh, uh, Instagram and LinkedIn really helps us. I think it levels the playing field for us more than it probably ever has. Moving off that for just a second, I want to go back to the Geico stuff because I noticed this this morning. I was watching a Geico commercial in my hotel room this morning and I've noticed that I'm not going to say that they make people look stupid, but I've noticed that here lately within the last, um, I guess, uh, year or so, that when they create a commercial, they, they put something in it that really catches your eye. The one I've noticed here lately is the guy chopping wood with his hand and his foot. Have you seen that commercial? It's almost something like if you were walking by the TV... You would look at that just because you're like, wow, that is so weird that this guy's right. chopping wood right. with his hands and feet. And, and I'm wondering if they're doing that. Of course, as you said earlier, and you said it very eloquently, they don't mention anything about insurance till the very last second. But it's right. it seems like they, they've taken a strategy that what we want to do is capture someone's attention. And, you know, do it in a way that gets them going, what the hell is that going on on that TV commercial right there? And then at the very end, once they've got them, they pop them with, uh, uh, hey, we can save you 15% or more on your car insurance. So, um, yeah, I mean, I I just think that that those two points, I I wanted to make those before we kind of moved on. But uh, give me your thoughts on that a little bit. You know, one of the basic principles of online marketing is look, hook, and took, you know. Um, Right. So it, it is capturing attention, you know, and and that's becoming kind of increasingly difficult, but at the same time, increasingly easy, as long as you can, can have the right lens of right. what you're trying to what you're trying to present online. It's all about grabbing the attention and then delivering value and where Geico delivers the value and people don't even realize it is, you know, it makes you laugh. It's, it's right. the humor of the whole thing. And that's the value. And that's what brings the guard down Mm -hmm. Um, because if they just, you know, if they started with the commercial off with, you could say 15% or more on your car insurance and then did the humor, Mm -hmm. then then it wouldn't even work, you know, because you just hit the power button on the TV. Right. That's just really good advertising and really good marketing, you know, and I, and I don't think, and I'm pretty sure Geico pays an an ad agency, a big brilliant ad agency to do all that for them. Oh, sure they do. But but the beauty of it though, is that you can recreate that at a local level. You can use those same principles with your smartphone um, or your iPhone 
and you can create a video and it doesn't have to be long, you know, the shorter, the better now, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can reach a quarter of a million people and it, and it's just, it's just nuts. When I created my video, I had seen another video online and you know, that's the other thing you can do as well. If you see something that works, do not be afraid to mimic that, you know, mm -hmm. good artists, you know, create, but great artists steal, you know, is, is kind of the, the, the thing that I've always kind of, right. like, I've always liked that saying, you know, um, because if it, if it works online somewhere, you know, and, and you can apply that to insurance really easily and you can kind of, uh, conceptualize how to do that and then point your phone at it and make it happen. You, you don't really have anything to lose. And at least, and you know, now with all these different Facebook analytics reporting tools, you mm -hmm. can, you know, figure out wh which audience is clicking, it's clicking with, um, and how it's doing well. And then you can kind of double down and, and scale that. Yeah, I forget the original point I was even trying to make. Yeah, yeah, I want to touch on something real quick, and then I'm going to move on to your videos because I want to spend I yeah. want to spend a little bit of time talking about your videos and why you created them and and where you are with those sure. and all that good stuff. Sure. But you very briefly mentioned something that I want to I want to touch on for these agents. So I spend a lot of time looking at Google Analytics, and I get reports from Google on my you know through my email and things. And one thing that I've really learned the past uh, year is I used to run videos and I would do a uh, I would do kind of a, a Facebook Live and YouTube thing where I would interview people and it was like an hour long. That's how we met, really. Yeah, it, yeah. Bradley just yeah. mentioned that's how we met. We spent forty five minutes doing a Facebook Live video and then I also recorded it and put it on YouTube. And it was really just two agents sitting down and, and talking and bullshitting about insurance and life and digital digital marketing. And Let all. me back up. It's actually not how we met. It's it's how this podcast was birthed, actually, that, because that, after yeah. that, he said, we should start a podcast. That's exactly right. At the, yeah. en at the end of that interview, I said, dude, we, we, really, we really need to start a podcast. I think we shook hands on it that we were going to do it. But one thing I've learned since that time... And thank God for Deep Fried Studios. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, they do was, all of our producing and stuff. Yeah, it was such a train wreck when we were trying to do this by ourselves. But one thing I've learned is is the where it's at now, where it's at today is short form video. And you you briefly touched on yeah. that. But these very yeah. large companies, even the ones I, probably more so outside the insurance industry because the insurance industry is so far behind everybody else. But companies like Jeep Cherokee and BMW and and, and a lot of these bigger companies are learning that you know, you run a six second ad that really just has the car going down the winding road and the the cool music, and then it just bam, bam, bam. You know, Jeep Cherokee, and then the the, the, yep. vid, the video's over. So what I've kind of started doing myself is, uh, as an as an agent, is if I'm going to do a video where I'm trying to educate my clients and friends and people on these social media sites, I limit everything to sixty seconds. If it can't be done in under sixty seconds, it ain't getting posted. Because when you start trying to run a three, four, five minute video, after about sixty seconds, people are like, "I don't have time for this. I got three three other things I'm supposed to be doing right now." So my, I well, guess, and, and that's that's even if they look at it the three minutes and even decide to click play. Exactly. You know, part of the you know part of the value added is. They can look at it. Okay, this is only going to take me thirty seconds. Exactly. Okay, let's watch it. You know? like, exactly. So. Yeah, they see the three. They see the three minute marker yeah. on there to start with. They're like, I ain't watching no. that. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. So with that being said, and and I hope that adds some value to some of these agents that maybe are starting to do some videos. Shorter is yeah. better. Uh, creative yep. is better. Anything you can do to differentiate yourself from everybody else is better. So let's talk a little bit about your videos. Tell me how how you got started. Guys, if you're listening to this podcast, you need to go, first of all, tell them where to go where they can watch some of these, uh, what I call spoofs on insurance agents. So the Facebook page is Life of an Insurance Agent, really, really plain and simple. And it used to be on my, so I work for a, I work for a captive company. Right. And these videos at first came out on that page. Mm -hmm. Um our legal team and the uh, com you know compliance department didn't necessarily think it was a good idea for them to be up, which I agree with now. Mm -hmm. And they they gave me a nice easy letdown. But really, how this all started is you know I just kind of started you know I always had a background in video and I always enjoyed video, so I, and I always you know tried to wonder man how can I how can I bring insurance to life and how can I get give people kind of an insight on my life so they realize that because I think people have this skewed image of insurance agents, either that, you know, they're just really boring people that just sit in an office all day and just, you know, 
sell insurance and make money or they're just, you know, fat cats that never are at the office and they really don't care about people. So I really wanted to show my clients that I have a personality. This isn't, you know, this isn't always the best profession. It's, it's really hard, you know, it, and it, it's really painful sometimes. Right. So, um, and I, I just kind of wanted to get, I, I wanted to give them an inside look at that. So I started creating videos, you know, I, they didn't, they didn't all work, you know, they really didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, I started doing like the educational videos where I would try to like give them insurance tips, which, you know, is not a bad idea. It just, it just didn't necessarily work for me, but I think that's probably, if there are any agents listening right now. That is the easiest way to start, find an article that says, you know, five tips to make your insurance better, which is really easy to Google, mm -hmm. you know, any insurance article, really. And you set the camera up, point it at yourself, and you just briefly summarize the article, yep. you know, and then and then post that to your Facebook page. Really easy way to start video and, and create engagement and, uh, you know, set yourself apart from hundreds of insurance ads that, you know, people see on a daily basis. So, and as I started creating those, I started noticing that the engagement was a lot better a with video than it was with static images you know I, I knew that video was the way to go and then i i went to the office one day when when no one was here and i had just gotten this a uh, gimbal thing like you know one of those those deals that keep your smartphone on a uh, like a stabilizer they're pretty affordable you can get them now for like a 100 bucks and I just started, I, I put the camera up and I got on the phone and I just started pretending that I was talking to someone and that I was talking to, you know, my clients. And I, and I was really, you know, all of these videos are all about real, these are all real experiences that I've had. And I'm sure that we've all had, um, you know, with better victimless. So, you know, I'm not making fun of any of my clients personally, sure. you know, I'm not trying to, you know, give out any, you know, I'm not making it personal. Um, but I'm also creating a little bit of intimacy too. And, and one of my favorite insurance guys to watch, Van Miller, um, you know, he, he always says, you know, you want to create intimacy, but you don't want to get personal, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things I, I try to do with my videos. That is um, wonderful advice. Yeah. Say that one more time. Create intimacy, but don't get personal. Mm. So you don't want to ask people personal questions, but you want them to really kind of see you on a, a different level that, you know, maybe not everyone gets. And that's just, I think, in sales across the board, you know, really getting that connection with somebody and, and getting them to, you know, buy from you and creating emotion and, and, and eliciting a response is, is really the name of the game. And it's going to get a lot harder moving forward because, you know, we're going to get so just bogged down with insurance bots and, you know, all these different things that are, that are coming out in the sales. The, the agent really has to start getting creative and thinking about a lot of different ways and, and new ways to really set, set themselves apart. So anyway, I, so I, I started talking to myself and I started talking to myself in the camera, you know? So were you and, nervous uh, that I, someone was going to walk in on you doing this? Is that why you did it when no one no, else was at the I, office? I, because I, I had the exact same experience. <laughs> I was so scared when I made my first video, I actually did it on a day we yeah. were closed for lunch. And I was like, please, yeah. dear God, do not let, because the two guys yeah, that were, yeah. that would have come back okay. were older than me and would not well, understand <laughs> at all. So imagine, I mean, yeah, there's one where I dress up as a woman. So that one, I was really kind of nervous that someone was going to walk in. But at the end of the day though, you know, and that's the other thing, it's all about fear. You know, a lot of, I, I, I know for a fact, there's a lot of insurance agents out there that don't make video just because they are terrified of what their clients might feel like if, their clients see them on a level that is maybe uncomfortable for them or that they maybe not have presented to them before when they're in their quoting insurance. Because, you know, when we when we put our insurance hats, we're very professional. It's not a game. You know, there's not really a lot of humor involved with it. You know, we're really out there protecting mm -hmm. people's lives, protecting assets, protecting property. So when you add humor to that, if you're careful, you know, you if you're careful, you can do it correctly. But if you're not careful and you're reckless and, and you put off the image that shows that you really don't care about people and that, you know, it is all just a big game to you, you're not going to get the right response. So you got to just overcome that fear and be willing to, you know, put something out, you know, obviously it's never going to go out unless you, you know, click the, the publish button, import it into iMovie, edit out the parts you don't feel comfortable with, you know, and, and uh, I mean, there's plenty of video apps and, you know, they're not oh, yeah. too hard to learn if, if you can't learn it, I'm sure you know a 12 year old or a, or whoever. Or go to Fiverr.com. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or that but, too, yeah. And you know, I think I think for me when I started, you know, doing video, and I've said this on the podcast before, I think 
you have to find out who it is that you're worried about their opinion of you. Figure out who it is because yeah. it's or not it everyone. Yourself? Is it or yourself? It's yourself. Yeah. For me, it was yeah. it was I was worried about what my peers would think about me, the other insurance agents. And finally, I said, you know what? They're not ever going to buy insurance from me ever. Anyway, Why yeah, am right. I worried yep. about the, if they think yeah. that I look stupid in my video as long as everybody else thinks it's hilarious? Yeah. So, And what you're both saying right now is why I would really like to put one of these enormous meat hooks that I have for hands in somebody's face hole when I <laughs> see people who have the bravery, and that's what we're talking about here, guys, the bravery sure. to get out there, what uh, really the three of us have done, but what a lot of people do, start videoing. I, I am a huge video guy. I believe that right now as I'm sitting here today that Bradley Flowers and Scott Howell should be arrested right now on the spot by the Mobile Police Department <laughs> and taken to prison for not videoing this podcast. I truly believe that. It is the biggest failure of this podcast. So, guys, if, if you're out there listening to this right now and you're a police officer, I would 1,000% understand if you took my ass to jail right now. That's how, that's how much I love video. Now, with that said, among other things, but yeah, but, but, but with that said, let me also say this. I, I just get so upset. In fact, it's probably the most upset I get. And Bradley has a story and I'm not going to ask him to tell it again because he's told it on like four of our podcasts about the first time he videoed and somebody made a statement and he thought he was never going to video again. I get so upset when people make lo uh, comments, you know, negative comments, especially when I'm sitting on Facebook watching somebody that I know well, doing a Facebook and, and live video and they look like they're being held hostage in Syria <laughs> And, and it's like this person is is every th fiber of their yeah. being is telling them not to do this. And you're going to say something negative about it? Are you kidding me? Yeah. And check it out. The, the real secret is just it's going to happen. Just accept it before you even right. do it. You know, you have to in, in order to be successful, you have to be polarizing. Right. You know, you have to make you have to be someone that's mm -hmm. going to make people take a side. And if you don't do that, you're probably not, you know, you're not going to create that really passionate audience. Um, exactly. You're not going to create those people that you want, you know, and a big secret that I, you know, I'll, I'll share with you guys. I don't invite anybody to like my Facebook page until they've actually liked something on my page. But right. like, you know, I've, I, I've I do the exact Facebook same thing, pages. man. You don't want people that aren't organic, you know, you really don't because you, you, you know, they actually turn into a liability really because, you know, if they're feeling forced to like you. They, they haven't really bought into anything yet. You well, know, they're just kind of, you know, they might be looking for a way to do something else to, well, you know, be a little internet troll or something. Or the flip side of that, Ben, so, is, is if you get a bunch of likes uh, that are people that are, that are not in your market or not in your target demographic, I'll give an example, episode 12 of this podcast, we had Joe McCloskey on. If you don't know him, he's the guy that ate the fish on camera. And and <laughs> the, the you know who I'm talking about, Ben? <laughs> I mean, I've seen a couple people eat fish on camera. He like, uh, he's know, a farmer. But, he's a farmer's <laughs> agent that that ate a stinky fish on camera. Go back to the episode. He, he tells if you're listening right now, oh, he tells man. the story okay. of of doing that. He got 40 million views on that video, and it's it has no brought way. about a lot of success for him. But uh, yeah, yeah. but at the same time, a lot that that's a Swedish fish, and a lot of the likes he got on that video and on his business page were from people in Sweden, and are never <laughs> literally like he would have to move yeah. in order to do business with them. And he's like, man, to be honest, I didn't get a lot of lot of business from it because, and and not only that, now every time I post something about insurance in Colorado, which is where he is on my business page. Nobody in Colorado is seeing it as people elsewhere. So I think that's yeah, one smart thing yeah. that you're doing, even though you were sort of forced to do it by your carrier, is you've got a separate page for these funny videos. So you're sort of building your personal brand while at the same time doing the business stuff on another page. Yeah, and right, Ben, right. this this is Scott. I just up my game from both of you guys. I just don't ask anybody to like my page ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, hey, that's the way to do it, too, but... Um, <laughs> You, you don't have a you don't have a big window to do that, you know. Right. Like really, once you get the engagement, you want to get on it and invite them as quick as possible. Because right. if you try it, mm -hmm. you know, a month later, the, they don't even they already forgot who you are. And so, I, um, I, to talk to talk so, about your videos, I originally discovered you on uh, somebody shared that video uh, in Insurance Soup. Um, if if you're not yeah. a part of Insurance Soup, join Insurance Soup. And we actually had uh, Michael McCormick and Taylor Dobby on. 
episode 15 and 16. It's a two-parter. Um, I think that's yeah. where I saw and, his and video. Michael McCormick's yeah. awesome, and, and that one group is the reason that first video went viral. Right. Yeah. That's all because of that group. Um, yeah, and those are those are great guys. I, I consider both of those yeah. guys personal friends of mine and, and Scott, I know, but uh, that is a, a great resource for agents. It can get a little... Uh, uh, I don't want to say nasty, but it can get a little hairy in there sometimes. But you got to have that thick yeah. skin. But I think that's part of part of the camaraderie as well. That's truth, baby. Exactly, that's truth. exactly. Truth. They're going to be they're going to yeah. be straight up with you and yeah. honest. And that's you know when that yeah. that video. I'm gonna be honest. If that had been my video, I'd have been scared to death when that went in there. But it seemed like it was received very well by the community because you made something that was relatable, and also you're an agent, so. You're not trying to if if a, if someone was trying to sell something to agents and made that video, that would not have been received as well. Don't you agree? No, and and you know I think that that's another you know thing that I like to kind of poke fun at because you have all these you have these different insurance people that are selling these big high ticket programs and high ticket offers and talking about that when you know really I just I just don't think that that's, that's I just don't think that's really like a realistic goal to shoot for. And I think that at the end of the day, you know, you have kind of people that are internet savvy that are in a way kind of taking advantage of other people. You know, it's, uh, well, I mean, so I, I, I'm, it's a fine line, but, um, if, if you do that, imposters, yeah, well, saying, if you go back, you know? or if you go back to, to Gary Vaynerchuk, if you're familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk, the only yeah. thing he sells oh, yeah. are his books. Basically, yeah. and so he he yeah. gives a, if if you continue to produce good content like that, like Ben, you could tomorrow say, "Hey, I'm going to sell a course for 199 dollars and teach insurance agents how to make make videos," and you would make yeah. some quick, fast, short term cash on it. And and a lot of people would do that. And I'm not saying that's the wrong thing to do, but if you were to keep doing this and not do, not not do anything, not do anything, not do anything, not do anything, you've built so much leverage for the long term that if you ever need to have that ask, you're going to get so much more from it. And that's exactly what Gary Vaynerchuk is doing. Yeah, and that's and that's exactly what you know. I'm kind of at. I enjoy making the videos as a hobby. You know, really, they keep me they keep me sane, and I'm really lucky because they do serve as an outlet for me. You know, because insurance can get really stressful and it's, you know, it can get really heartbreaking sometimes. It's nice to be able to create humor out of, you know, maybe a tough work week and you can, you know, make fun of the things that happened versus kind of dwelling on them in a negative way. And, uh, and, so, and, and, and you know, going back that, to, yeah, and going back to, to what we were just talking about, about all these insurance people that are selling programs. And, and there's nothing coaching. wrong with that. But, but no, I want to say this though. The one thing that I do find value in, and, and I'm sitting here talking about it even though I haven't bought it yet, but like uh, McCormick and his, and his guy, uh, is it Taylor? Yeah. Uh, their, their program that they have, stuff that uh, is more technology-driven that, I mean, I, literally, literally, I, guys, I, did, I, I lost my Facebook password and could not get on Facebook this morning. That's how... <laughs> That, that if, if we're looking at a at a at a meter of where Scott Howell is on technology, I could not even log into Facebook this morning. So for guys like me, uh, on from the technology side that are so far behind, and and part of that's my age, I guess I don't know because I'm 46. But um, having a program like like McCormick's guys do over at Insurance Soup um, and some other programs that Bradley and I will probably talk well, about a little bit today, I, I do McCormick, I do find value in those. I yeah, do find oh, value. And McCormick's is priced correctly. You know, right. I'm talking about the guys that are wanting five thousand dollars, right? Um, right. You know, for like a six week course when. Right. I think the standard insurance agent just needs. I mean, you got we got the biggest book of business to start and that's right. the phone book you know right, right. <laughs> so uh it's all about it's all about taking action you know but i think that uh i Truth think that now here. we got kind of a dangerous thing going on to where you know you have agents that you know we sit in front of computers all day and mm -hmm. if uh, we're scrolling through our facebook feeds and you know there's there's all these quote-unquote gurus and mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know programs that are going to promise to deliver us twenty thousand dollar premium life cases on a weekly basis um uh, yeah. i just think it's a scary thing to fall into and and i you know i would rather i would rather you know create something that kind of like makes fun of that versus actually trying to uh try yeah, to, that's a good try idea. to sell people on that promise I, so once or twice a year i go up to uh the home office for a company i work for or represent and and i talk to a class of new agents and it is literally my favorite day of the year 
because it wasn't that long ago, six years ago, that I was in their shoes. And I know every one of those guys is looking for a silver bullet because they're scared to death. And they have this one thing that they are anchoring on, like, okay, I'm yeah. going to I'm gonna do that. So essentially what I like yeah. to do is I go up there and I say, okay, what's everyone's action plan? What's your silver bullet? And I blow holes into all of it. And, and with mm-hmm. me... I'm pretty well known for Facebook around here and, and, and I get a lot of business from Facebook. I get more business from Facebook than anywhere else. And so those guys up there get up there and they expect me to talk about Facebook. And literally it is the last thing I talk about if I talk about it at all, because I don't want them to think, Oh, the only reason he is successful is because he does Facebook. I'm going to do that. No, it's the first no. three to four years before I ever did a business post where I was knocking on doors and going to chamber luncheons and making cold calls to build my pipeline up to where I could divert and then start doing the personal branding, right. which gives you the long term yep. success. Right. So I think yep. I think you know I was actually listening to Gary Vaynerchuk's very first keynote at South by Southwest this morning on the way here, which is the one that actually went viral that made him famous. He said, you know, you want bling bling, you want to do this, you want to do that. Work, that's how you get it. Boom. Let one one question I have, one question I have before we get off the phone, and I and I should have asked it before we got on the, the, the podcast here. Ben, if you could give you've been doing this now for five years. If you could give new agents, they've just gotten into business, maybe they've been in a couple years, they're struggling, they've what piece of advice would you would you give them in terms of finding that success that they're looking for? Just ditch the uh, fear. You're an amazing person. Yeah. And uh, people are I waiting like for your call. That is a phenomenal you know? answer. Um, yeah. And go out and help as many people as you can. Don't go out and sell insurance. You go out and try to sell insurance, you're going to lose and you're going to hate your life. Go out and cultivate meaningful, real relationships and help people. Which I love that so much. Yeah. Don't sell insurance and, you know, be different. Don't be, you know, don't be that guy saying, I got the cheapest policy. I got the cheapest policy. Let them ask you for the sale. Let them ask you what to do, you mm-hmm. know, because that makes you an advocate versus a salesperson. We could talk, so. we could do a, yeah. a four hour podcast on that because I feel very strongly about, about that in terms of building the personal brand and making them come to you. Right. If an agent's listening to this podcast or, or if anybody's listening to this podcast and they need to get in touch with you, how do they get in touch with you? I'm really accessible. You can just like Life of an Insurance Agent Facebook page. Okay. Or you can just Google me, Ben Volk Facebook or, or Ben Volk uh, Life of an Insurance Agent. And guys, it's let me... Real easy. Yeah, you know? let me say this. The the word, the last name Volk is V as in Victor, not a B. I've spent... Yeah. T- I mean, spent 10 minutes this morning looking up uh, Ben Volk. <laughs> And, and and I started yeah. like following some guy in Sweden and uh, or Denmark or somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And, so <laughs> and as of this recording, you are listening to the only insurance podcast on Spotify. Boom. So, so Ben, That's people amazing. can actually I, Google search your name in Spotify, and you'll be awesome. in there. So so awesome. th- when when that happened to us. I said, you know what, Kanye West, Taylor Swift, Bradley Flowers, and Scott Howell, what do they have in common? They're all on Spotify. That's right. That's right. Ben, I I, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you being on this podcast. I've really, really enjoyed it. I think agents will get something out of this today, and I really enjoy you being with us. Guys, what do I always say? Rewards come from action, not discussion. You need to get your ass out today and sell something. Sell something for your family. Write good business for the insurance agency that you represent. Write good business for the companies that you represent. My name is Scott Howell, and I'm joined with Mr. Bradley Flowers. Bradley, thank you for being here today. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Ben. Guys, we love you. Have a great day. We'll see you. We'll see you. you next time on the next episode of the Insurance Guys podcast. Thanks, Ben. All right. Thanks for listening to the Insurance Guys podcast. If you need to know more about me or you need to get in touch with Scott, you can always reach me at theinsuranceguyonline.com or email me at iprotectins at gmail.com. And if you need to get in touch with Mr. Bradley Flowers, go to bradleyflowersinsurance.com or email him at bradley at sarahlandinsurance.com. Guys, we love you. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to being with you again real soon on the next episode of the Insurance Guys. Take care.